today I'm down here in our basement. I'm going to make some homemade soap, one of my favorite things to do. And I'm going to show you my workspace quickly before we get started, just to show you that you can take any space. It doesn't have to be fancy or anything, as you will soon see here, and turn it into a productive workspace. Um, it's so much fun. I love while I'm making soap, if I have maybe the laser engraver going at the same time, it just makes me feel really good to have like a lot of things going on at one time and being productive. Let's take a look at the soap kitchen. Of course, you need a little bit of space to work in. I really like this island here to work on. And then of course, the countertop is always full of things when I'm making soap. And I have some shelves over here with some containers. Um, here I have some soap curing. And over here, there's a large wardrobe where I store a lot of soap supplies. I also store some underneath the island. I'm going to show you some essential tools that I can't be without when I'm making soap. First off is this little electric burner. Uh, this is where I melt all of my hard oils. It's nothing pretty to look at, but very essential. And then over here, I have four different items that I could not be without. Uh, this thermometer, my soap cutter, immersion blender and the scale there's of course some other obvious things you couldn't be without you know your soap molds containers scrapers things like that but in this cupboard i want to show you what i have it's nothing fancy again but uh, awesome storage for my molds and my mica powders um, some other ingredients and then all of my oils here and moving out through our laundry room door here brings us underneath the deck and i haven't fixed this space up for the spring season coming soon, but this is a really handy spot to mix my lye and water in. I like to do it outside and often I'll do it here on this bench. There's the spoon that I use to mix it with or this little table here, spool table and the little black table over there. I even have a light to work with uh, if it's dark. Sometimes during the winter it's dark when I make soap. And of course a morning like this is just beautiful to enjoy the sounds and the views out here. You might hear the Phoebe singing, such a spring-like sound. As I'm mixing soap or washing dishes, I can watch little birds hop around on the outside. Uh, the seeds that fall from the feeder above attracts them. Pretty sure there's none here now. So I'll be working on a spring scented soaps in this video, one of my favorites. And of course, Lily of the Valley, it will be in this mix. Uh, you guys know how I feel about that one. And I have a new one I wanna try. Probably shouldn't do a first time in a video here, but I'm going to wing it, see how it goes. It's a different type of swirl, uh, so stay tuned for that. But just follow along as I make soap. I'll probably explain a little bit as I go, but for the most part, I just want this to be a relaxing video. Um, if you're like me, you sometimes need that. In fact, I sometimes use soap making videos to fall asleep to. I know it sounds weird, but to me, it's just so satisfying and relaxing and peaceful to just watch someone make soap. I can't wait to show you the labels that MB made. They turned out so cute. Let's get right into it. I have learned with making soap, you cannot be too prepared, like just to get everything ready beforehand before you mix that lye and water together and melt your oils. So that's what I'm doing here is just gathering everything I need for today, you know, including all of my uh, oils, mica powders, and I have little containers that I mix these in. And right now I'm out of the containers that I like to use, but these will do. You know, with anything, you kind of learn as you go. The more you do it, you kind of find a routine that works for you. I've even learned that during the summer, I can wait to do this prep work until I have my lye and water mixed together. Since it's warmer on the outside, my lye water is going to cool down slower, allowing me, you know, some time to do this. I always try to fill all of my minutes up with, you know, doing something valuable and I don't wanna just sit around and wait for my lye water to cool down, so it's nice to be doing something as that is happening. I was so disappointed in myself. Here I wanted to make this relaxing video with some sound effects you know, included as I'm working, and I accidentally left my mic plugged in into my camera, so that would mean there's no sound in a lot of the clips, but hopefully it's still relaxing for you guys with the music.
here is all of my prep work as far as the scents and the mica powders go. Probably looks kind of confusing, but I think I know where I'm going with it, hopefully. Um, here is going to be my new swirl that I'm going to try, and it's supposed to look like grass by the time I'm finished, like the swirl or the streaks in the soap, rather. And the scent is Aspen Grass. Smells so good. And then over here is another new one that on the fly here I decided to try this. This one is probably going to be the biggest challenge. As you can see, lots of different ingredients. But to make a long story short, I want it to look like chocolate covered strawberries by the time I'm finished. So we'll see. Always make sure to wear proper gear when mixing lye and water together, of course. And I always try to watch, you know, which way like the steam goes and I try to stand away from it. And I also have a mask that I hold over my mouth and nose to breathe through. As I'm mixing, you know, the oils and the lye water together, things will start to thicken up, of course. And I want it to reach like a medium trace is often what I go by. And if you're into soap making, you know what I'm talking about. But your trace is basically, uh, you know, how thick it is. And often I'll test it and kind of drizzle some of the batter, you know, over the top. If I can still see some of the marks, it's about right to pour. A normal batch of soap that I make fills two loaves, and these are molds that I get off of Amazon. Um, they're just small, they make a nice nine bars plus a little bit of extra, and I'll link them down below in the description box along with any other tools that I use here. I do have a recipe for just a single loaf, and I'll use that one if I make any samples or something new for the first time. And I also have a third recipe that I use to fill a round soap loaf. And I got the mold from Brambleberry, and I'll try to link that down below also in the description box. I just recently started making round soaps, 
and I definitely should invest in a few more molds. Uh, it will be more time efficient to do that, but for now I'm having a lot of fun with uh, dabbling in round soap. I started doing somewhat of a different swirl than I used to. At one point I would just mix my green batter into the white as it's still in the bowl, like a drop swirl, and then as I poured it would kind of mix together in the mold. And I found that often I'd get almost a light green soap versus a perfectly white and green soap. So this way, what I'm doing here definitely helps with keeping the colors kind of separated. So my normal space to actually mix the soap is over here by the sink. So I think my next batches I'll be doing that. Um, I found, you know, time is everything when you're making soap. Like my lye water is cooling on the outside. I need to keep at it. And it's just easier for me to work in my space that I'm used to. Um, I did that first batch um, on my island table so that you could see, you know, what I'm doing through a glass bowl. But it's basically all of them are the same, you know, just being mixed together. The second batch I'm doing here is Citrus Grove. It's one of my favorites too. It's MB's favorite. She loves this one. I did mix just a little bit of chamomile uh, with this. So it's kind of an orangey chamomile scent. And for the swirl, I'm actually doing the old way as far as I'm pouring my white mixture into the bowl that is filled with the orange batter. And I thought my camera was rolling when I did this, but it wasn't. Uh, so I kind of missed filming that, but that's what I did here. This one is lilac, and this is our same old lilac scent that we've had ever since I started making soap. Also one of my favorites, and in case you can't tell, I'm really into floral scents. Um, and this color is just lovely. It just fits exactly how the soap smells. It's just a pretty soft lilac color. For my round soap today, I'm gonna to do the wild blackberry. And this smells wonderful, but I kind of forgot it does accelerate. And that means like some of your essential or fragrance oils that you add into your batter will make it accelerate or get you know thickened too quickly. And I have to work quick here, but I see I'm not getting my white mixed in with the black like I want to. Um, I should have just hand mixed it. That also helps if you run into that. Um, not use your immersion blender, just you know, hand mix with a spatula. And I haven't mixed this one recently and I kind of forgot that that oil, the blackberry oil kind of does this, but it'll still smell great and work the same, but might just not look quite as pretty. So the swirling method I plan to use here for this grass soap is a called a hanger swirl and it's where I put this piece of wire that I twisted together just to thicken it a bit, uh, kind of put that in the mold and try to push some of my green down into the white, again trying to make it look like blades of grass. I have no idea how this is going to look but I do know it's going to smell great because I love what I'm smelling so I guess it doesn't always have to look pretty as long as it functions but definitely a plus though if it turns out so the final one here is again supposed to look like chocolate covered strawberries I took a picture recently I think over Valentine's Day of some and I just love the color combination I thought I'm gonna try to make soap to kind of look like this the main part of the soap will of course be made to look like strawberries and I'm using chia seeds. I'm mixing that in here to have that strawberry seeded look. The green of course will be for the leaves 
and then I have a brown for the chocolate and I'm gonna drizzle it with white and as I'm mixing here I already see I don't have my uh, amounts proportioned correctly like I have too much green I think and the green should be a little bit lighter um, it's not quite the shade that I was thinking of and then I think I have too much chocolate and white too so definitely if I decide to do this again if it you know even turns out I'll probably do more strawberry and just a lot less of all the toppings I actually used a cocoa fragrance oil to scent my chocolate part with and all of the other colors are scented with the strawberry and I gotta say it smells exactly like chocolate covered strawberries right now it smells so good Of course, there's going to be some dishes to wash with soap making. I always pre-rinse everything uh, before I actually wash it. Now we have the fun part of cutting and labeling the soap. It's always so satisfying. I can't wait to see what those two new samples look like on the inside. So let's find out. I do have some soda ash on top of this lilac soap, so I always like to kind of try to wipe that off before I start cutting. And I'm never sure, it's always a mystery, it's one of those soap making mysteries I guess, is why some loaves get it and others don't. I've done a lot of research, tried to you know tweak things here and there, and I just haven't really figured out a way to completely avoid it, but it's there's worse things that could happen with your soap, I mean it's usually... Uh, fairly, you know, wipeable, like you can kind of wipe it off and it still looks pretty.
So let's see how the grass soap turned out. Actually, I'm kind of impressed. I feel like it does look like blades of grass, and I might even end up turning it upside down, have the green at the bottom. That way it's more, you know, grass-like in appearance. I feel like this one might be the flop of the batch here, but at least I tried it. I think the colors need some adjusting if I were ever to do this again. Like I mentioned, that green is too rich. I like the strawberry color. It even kind of looks like strawberry with those seeds in there. I'm already thinking, do I want to do a you know, strawberries and cream? Maybe have just like a white um, little heap on top of each bar. I think that would look cute. Gotta say, it does smell wonderful. The next step is shaving the edges of the soap. I don't spend a lot of time with this, but uh, just to kind of clean it up a bit. Of course, the soap I'm working on here is cured and ready to go. I'm not already shaving the one I just made. That will happen later, usually. I do have a strawberry and lime scent here that smells amazing, and this one will be available on the Etsy shop. You're gonna see a few other scents that I didn't make in this video, but are gonna be available, cured, ready to go. I saw on Pinterest how you can use coffee filters to wrap the soap, so I thought that would be so fitting for round soap. So that's how we're packaging these. And I think at the point of filming here, these might already be sold out, but stay tuned. We are gonna have, you know, the one that I made here in this video that will be available in the next three to four weeks. And then uh, I'm always making some more. So uh, keep watch for that if you're wanting some of this cute old orchard collection soap. So one of the last steps, of course, is taking pictures of the soap, especially if we have new kinds, or sometimes I just like to take fresh new pictures. I often do it right here on the kitchen countertop where there's plenty of light. We always have some soap ends and we package those kind of as a sample pack. And at the point of filming here again, we might be out of them already, but keep a watch out for that listing in case we you know, add some here in the next uh, weeks to come. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. And I will share my recipe, my soap recipe down below in the description box in case you wanna make this exact same soap. I know there's tons of recipes out there, but um, I gotta say, I feel like I've kind of perfected this one. Not that I'm not always, you know, open to new ideas, but um, I have a soap calculator website that I go on. And just over the years of making soap, I've, you know, added some things, took some things out, and I finally got all of those bars where you can tell if your soap has, you know, the right, you know, moisturizer, conditioning, cleansing, all that. I feel like I have the bars exactly where they need to be. And it does give a really awesome lather like you could tell in the video. So feel free to use that recipe for yourself if you're wanting to make some soap. Thanks for hanging out with me down here in my soap kitchen and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.